Michelle, it's very, very happy to have you with us today. And uh, I'll first, uh, we know each other, we've known each other for a long time, time, but I'll introduce myself. Uh, John McDonald, and I'm the Smart Grid Business Development Leader for G Grid Solutions. But more importantly with Seagray, uh, I've been a member about 16 years now, but what I really enjoy is for 13 years I've been the VP of Technical Activities for the United States National Committee, which is now the largest national committee in Seagray. And uh, so I love the technical activities and, and leading that. Um, give us, you know, what both in industry, Michelle, and then particularly with Seagray. Okay, well, in industry, I'm presently non executive pre uh, president of Supergrid Institute in France, and in Seagray, I'm now the current president. And uh, I also thank you very much, uh, John, for you, your contribution to Seagray, which is very much appreciated and very much welcome. Yeah. Now, so I, I was thinking, you know, every two years it's very exciting with Seagray because it's a very special uh, event. But what you know, what what is going on right now with Seagray? Well, yeah. as you know, Seagray is is an association where people share knowledge about power system expertise, and it's an ongoing process all the time that people are gathering into working groups. That means about 17,000 members, uh, over 280 working groups, which have a lifespan of uh, three years, and produce papers and documents. And some of those pa and some papers are presented at the uh, session, which takes place in Paris every two years, and where we have uh, this year 3,700 people coming to present or to listen to, uh, to to papers and to visit the exhibition, where we have also 280 companies showing the best that they have, so it's really a, an opportunity in the uh, Electricity Center to, to see and visit uh, what is the state of the art, uh, where things are going, what are the trends, and also to meet. And uh, after this uh, very long uh, pandemic, where all we could do is, is meet with, through screens and video, I think people are very so happy to be warmly together. And when we looked at when we did the first day, the uh, which is on a Sunday, which is basically the opening, we had two and a half thousand people who attended the opening. It's never happened before. It just showed it was buzzing. There was warmth. I think that's what's very important. Well, what's exciting for us is there's more people from the U.S. that are in Paris this week than any time in the history. You know, so we have more people from the United States uh, here. Yes. Well, the, the, here the, the the large countries that. Are very present. Of course, it's France because that's easy. It's next door. But then we have Germany, we have U.S., and we have Japan. Wow. Japan have uh, have shown a lot of also attention to 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 Cigre. They were whether offline or whether present, mm -hmm. and I must say that's really a tribute. But we are missing people from China. Right. Uh, obviously, we have less people from Russia and nobody from Ukraine. So there are so this number, which is more or less the same as we had in three thousand in two thousand eighteen would have been largely exceeded if we had a, a more settled and peaceful world. Right, right. So the thing that I think most people don't realize is the scope of, of Seagrace technical activities. You know, it's, it's a, when you look at the 16 study committees, there's 16 uh, technical areas that, that Seagrace focuses on. And Seagrace doesn't write standards, but Seagrace produces very practical information that um, you know, is, is, is used to solve problems when we get in the field, particularly. Uh, but the 16 different study committees cover so many different areas. Um, I know that um, Seagray has had a lot of emphasis recently is what we call end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. what, what are we talking about there, Michelle? Right, well, historically, Seagray started by transmission. And in fact, uh, but now it, it has completely changed focus, but not because it wanted to change focus, but just because the industry has changed. Mm -hmm. And the end to end concept means basically the, the consumer, the end consumer, has an impact on the grid exactly also when you add them on and in, in clouds uh, on the operation of the grid. So now electricity, they don't, uh, electrons don't mind. They go from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And since we've changed the structure of the networks from being uh, from top to bottom, from large power plants to individual consumer, from now we have consumers and prosumers. You inject power at medium voltage level, you inject from the top. So the, the management of the network has completely changed. Mm -hmm. And the focus has been now how to manage this variability in time, uh, in constraints, because the, 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 the network is not a copper plate. So this, it has to be managed and digitalization has helped a lot, but there's still enormous things to do 
uh, from consumer to generator, basically to ensure because that at a given time, the demand means uh, meets generation with a bit of storage in between. But you know, the, the quantity of storage we can put in place is is not unlimited and not for a limited time. So the real issue will be in future when you have intermittent uh, supplies, when you have um, inverter. Um, equipment connected, therefore you less uh, inertia. How to how to stabilize the network so that people can still have the light on because we're so used to it and we're so dependent on electricity on anything we do. Uh, so it's a question also of uh, added to the fact that uh, we're also looking at decarbonization. That decarbonization is is a is a must. Uh, that electricity both in the way it's produced, but especially in the way it can, it can be used in replacement of other uh, means of, of energy, can be a fantastic vector for bringing um, the world to a net carbon zero. So that's also going to be a huge driver in the way the industry is going to move. So we see, we've seen a lot of uh, much more emphasis with Seagury on distribution and use customer so things like uh, study committee C6 on distribution uh, with distributed energy resources. Um, but one, one thing I like too is the, um, so much of what we're doing is interdisciplinary. It's not just one study committee, uh, but it could be monitoring and diagnostics of transformers, which we, we see with A2, study committee A2, but then the communications that's involved for the information and storing that information in an information system would be uh, study committee D2. So what, I, what we see is more and more joint working groups, right? bringing the expertise of, of working groups together because the, the, the problems we have are interdisciplinary, right? Absolutely, and uh, for, one was to, to enter more into a, an area which, where we had less representative, which was distribution, therefore to, to attract and, and to benefit from the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the second is that we, we have a structure which is also a bit vertical, and therefore we have, it has values because at least people know where they stand, but, uh, to, but all the action of the, of the study committees is now to have intergroups and, and basically to, to be able to, to share knowledge between groups. And that's happening quite well. Yeah. So uh, we're going to do our new strategic plan and in, obviously in, in the strategic plan we'll think about the structure. And, but today the, the structure we have is not an impediment uh, to, to the way we are progressing and to the quality of the recommendations and that, we, that we produce, which as you said rightly are not standards, they are sometimes pre-standards, but they are normally practical solutions that can be shared and that the purpose of them is to be shared and therefore could be uh, and so something which is proven and reasonably simple to implement. Right. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so from, not, not only from Seagrave, you know, as, as, I mean, you've been involved in the industry for a long, long time, but with power grids and, and with Seagrave, if we look at things are changing very quickly, Tech, new technology is, is, is uh, being available. What do you see as some of um, one or two of the biggest trends, just from your perspective, with with uh, the grid itself? Well, we have, as we said, you take the two extremes. One is you need to to share bulk power and to transmit bulk power. Also, at a time where people don't want to be, we still have the not in my backyard syndrome. So, so therefore, in some areas you have where you had power lines, you're going to have power cables. We see that in, in, in Germany. So uh, clearly, um, HVDC, multi-terminal HVDC, to bring power from from the sea, from the, uh, the from the, the offshore wind, and so that's one area of of, of, uh, of development, especially when you when you come to building uh, um, an HVDC network. So that's where we put a multi-terminal uh, mm -hmm. application. And then on the other end is how to go and control uh, within the household. How to do, how to manage this demand response, how to make the, the prosumer an actor, uh, mm -hmm. and therefore to exchange all these data. So clearly, at both ends of the of the network, uh, there's going to be more applications, more softwares, some hardware as well, because you always need hardware. And uh, and we still haven't found a way to do away with cables, so we still need to be connected for for electricity. So to me, these are the really the two areas where there's strong emphasis. With also because we're opening up with, with digitalization, the, the risk of cybersecurity, which mm -hmm. we see more and more. So mm -hmm. we have to put in systems that are can be protected or or can uh, or can heal themselves. So that's the, the the other area I would say in our field that uh, 
that, that I see moving and uh, dramatically moving. So, yeah. Which means there's going to be an enormous competition between for talent. Mm -hmm. um, to attract uh, also young people, they want to, they have to see a finality. The fact that we are, you know, working for contributing to decarbonization is a goal that I think a, a lot of uh, young people would like to, to, to go to, but we're not the only one to do that. And, uh, and therefore, we, are, we will be competing for talent within the industry and uh, along with other industries or software industries or people who could attract. And that's going to be the biggest challenge. Yeah. Get people on board in, a, in an activity where you need a lot of knowledge and where experience is built up also. Mm -hmm. So to me, that, that's going to be the, the stopping point. I think, you know, the. And how, how do we do that? You know, when we know that um, young people, for instance, uh, uh, it's what's important with the, the jobs that they have is not just how much money they make and where they live, but they want to help the environment mm -hmm. and they want to help society. Mm -hmm. So that's where we, we need to make sure that with, uh, you know, that we're relevant exactly to to uh, young professionals, and um, we need to emphasize, you know, with um, many of the study committees, how the work that they're doing is helping society, mm -hmm. helping the environment. But also uh, with Seagray, we have the Next Generation Network, so we we have special programs for for the, the young people up to uh, age 35, special th paper competitions and paper presentations, right, and activities for young professionals. So, so I mean, the Next Generation Network in Seagray is is, grow is growing. It started, in fact. Uh, I think in the UK, if I remember well, now we have 33 countries which uh, have an organization and, and it's really building up. And in our operation, in the uh, steering committee of CIGRE, call it the board of CIGRE, um, the executive board, uh, we have uh, included uh, uh, among the representatives uh, uh, a representative elected by the Next Generation Network okay. and also a, a representative by, from the women in, in energy, because also to, to ensure that we have more diversity in CIGA, and we know that's not our strength because we are roughly at 9 or 10 percent uh, 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 women participants. Uh, some of it is due because uh, in the, in the schools are not producing, but we need to attract people at that level uh, right. that, uh, that they come to our business, which is a fantastic business. So one of, one, of, one of the exciting things for me, you know, being in the industry for so long is the movement from being totally reactive Right? We waited until something mm. failed and then we reacted. Yes. And then we thought, well, that's, that's not the best approach. Maybe we should be more proactive. Instead of waiting until something failed, let's say, what information do we need from a transformer, mm. from a circuit breaker? And what analytics do we need to uh, predict the health, mm. predict failure modes? But it's opened up many new things that we weren't used to, like a digitization of the grid, greater emphasis on communications, but also organizations hiring data scientists and, and, and having um, decisions based on data. Correct. So I see much, much more emphasis with study committee D2, with information systems, communications. So it's, I see, you know, Seagray has a structure to embrace this trend, but we see this growing and growing, and, and we see papers being written and presented by data scientists who have don't have strong domain knowledge of the grid, mm -hmm. but now as they learn more about the grid, they have a different perspective on the grid, but from a data science approach. It's clear that you can use technologies from, probabil from probabilist analysis, from uh, game uh, practices like uh, you know the Monte Carlo uh, uh, schemes in order to predict events because they, uh, in the way they replicated in the past, the low signals and how they will predict failures in the future and direct you basically to to the point you should look at. It, it should, the, the, the array of possibilities we have today is, is, uh, is huge. And in fact, technology is there. And, and I think there's no doubt, both in, uh, in terms of hardware, both in terms of software, in terms of digital. Uh, we still have a real issue often, is linked to regulation. Yeah. And, and in fact, today, it's more the way the regulation is set out that is uh, slowing down, let's say, the, the evolution, and, and, uh, and we have to find ways, and, and uh, that's an area of work for, for CIGRE to get closer to regulators and to also recommend ways to have the market, to operate the market and to operate the, uh, the, uh, and the regulation limits 
so that the, the system can be much more reactive and uh, at the same time it has to be organized. Yeah. So, and it may also change who has the, who manages the network and at well, uh, and independently or who owns the assets. Yeah. And then at what level do you manage the network? Is it at a distribution level? Is it a, at a national level? Is it a, at a continental level? Yeah. So there's, uh, it, this also carries a lot of things. Um, which m uh, technology may, 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 may in fact imply because uh, one thing is certain is that physics is stubborn. Mm -hmm. So uh, at one day um, there's not two, three ways of doing things. And uh, especially when you want strong reactivity, when you want to make best use of your assets. Uh, uh, also, also we were seeing that one way to improve the network would be for, some, for distribution entities maybe to, to, in, to assist people in investing in their own home rather than putting new assets on the, on the network. There are lots of ways, to, I mean, the, the barriers are, for, are, are disappearing. And uh, I think where Sigre has a, a great contribution is be because people speak freely. Because, um, that's the interest of Sigre. We're not there to defend the principle, we're there to find a solution yeah. for the betterment of, uh, of the power sector, betterment of the electricity sector, and to some extent the betterment of humanity. Uh, the people will, will come with recommendations, but then they will need to be implemented and we need to share that understanding with other parties, uh, especially in, on the regulation and uh, uh, side. And I think that's going, to be, that's going to be extremely interesting as well. The one thing that, that you learn here, you know, is, is uh, the world is so flat and so connected yes. that, um, you know, it's natural to think, <clears throat> if I develop a product in the U.S., that I can take that, and it's a strong business case, I have a lot of customers, I can take that same product around the world and it would have the same business case. And the, the, the nice thing here is with, with such a global presence of companies and, and experts, is you really learn there's differences in standards, differences in regulation, differences in uh, business cases with technology all over the world. Mm -hmm. And so the, the global perspective is so important and, um, and that this is a good opportunity to really, you know, learn that in depth here. Yeah, clear. I mean, there's, there's not a unique solution. I mean, and because the, the, ge the geographies are not the same. Uh, if you're in a country where, which is a long country, it's not the same as in a country which is square in terms of network stability. Right. If you're in a country where there are a lot of nuclear power plants, uh, you have national inertia compared to a country where you have more renewable, so the solutions adapted to each may not be may not be the same. So, mm -hmm. but what's interesting is to understand, and uh, and that's the value of Sigre to understand how a network behaves in each of those areas, mm -hmm. and maybe to make a recommendation as to what I think better or what is the solution that works in such a case mm -hmm. by replication, and, and then ideally try and move towards uh, uh, with sh shared solutions. But we, we all come with different history. Other some countries of hydro are blessed with hydro. Right. Uh, others don't have uh, have sun, so it's all. Uh, this also is the richness of the uh, of the world, and we come with also different historical economic perspectives, mm -hmm. and that also has a lead into the way uh, uh, countries, you know, are organized. And uh, so uh, the wealth of Siga is that people are prepared to speak about that without barriers, yeah. and uh, and to and try to help uh, each other, each other country, to find a best solution based on the shared experience. Yeah. But respecting the origin of the country where it is and the, right. and the habits of the people. Right, right. But we say, you know, that the landscape of, of what we do is, we say, from turbine to toaster. Yes. Right, from, from the power plant. Co all, correct. All the way into your home. Yeah. So I think you, you, we've said this, but we want to emphasize that the 16 study committees and Seager activities mm -hmm. really do address that entire landscape. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And that's what we say when we said end to end. It's really uh, from turbine to toaster, as you say. Uh. <laughs> so, in in as a president of Seagray and with and, and former president of the French National Committee of Seagray, so a long history with Seagray. In putting and vice president finance in between. That's right. You were. That's right. I, so yeah. So we have to make money to to be to stay to stay viable. Yes. Um, and, and we you know we were virtual last year. So we haven't been together for four years since yes, 2018. Exactly. In putting together um, the 2022 program, what what would you say? What would if people that attend? What would you want? Like one or two key takeaways for people that spend the week here and um, 
and then leave. What would one or two key takeaways in, in you know, putting this together and really wanting people to learn to, the things you, you know, learning the technology, networking, mm. and really seeing the exhibition? What would they well, I leave, think, leave with? Well, I think the first thing I would like uh, our members or to, to leave with is pride. Pride in what they do, pride in what our industry do, does. I think that's the most important. Uh, the second is the fact that they will play a key role in the way the world will evolve in terms of decarbonization. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, uh, and therefore I would like to, that they will put their energy in the next two years when we'll be preparing yeah. other documents in that field. And, uh, and I would say the third is uh, the world is troubled. We have a contribution to peace and, uh, and to continue to communicate so as to hope that things will come back to reason one day. Mm -hmm. And I think so these are the three areas Pride, yeah. our future is to contribute to decarbonization yeah. and it's fantastic to have 95 countries together talking and sharing and smiling and drinking together. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun but learn, learning at the same learning, time. Learning, exactly. Right, yeah. right, okay. Well, um, you know, as you know, I always, we always, I always enjoy uh, spending time with you, Michelle. Always Thank enjoy you. talking with you. Thank you very much, John. It's really a pleasure, and uh, I know I will see you. So I thank you also for your future contribution right. to Seagrey, which uh, is re really valuable. Yeah, Seagrey. You know, I, I said Seagrey to be a to be a complete engineer to me in the world. Uh, you you need to participate in Seagrey. There's so many benefits: the global perspective, leadership opportunities, the networking is is invaluable, and not just to technical people, but executives. Absolutely. You know, Seagrey has a strong attraction for executives of companies, so it's just very good. So, and what's interesting in the way you work in Seagrey, there's no hierarchy in Seagrey. In fact, you know, people, it's a benevolent people give their time, and, and therefore you influence by by nature, but you don't influence by order, right. and that also is is a very good. Uh, exercise for people to to how to behave. I mean, uh, there are times where you have to give orders, but but in Sierra, no, you share, and I think, uh, and it's also you share by influence, by knowledge, by being able to communicate, and I think these also are great human values which are universal, and uh, and I think that, and uh, that, that's also something which I think they can be proud of. Well, thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Thank I'll, you. John. Always good to spend time with you and see you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. GE Building a World That Works.